Hey everybody, welcome to Susie's Stuff. Today we are going back to the past and look at some of my favorite spring DIYs to get us in the mood for my new spring DIYs coming out next Saturday. I'm really pretty new to YouTube, so I've only been on for about a year and a half. And if you're just tuning in, you might have missed some of my favorites. And I've got 10 of my favorites from last year. 2021 and I really quick want to say thank you for commenting watching subscribing and liking I have really gotten to know some of you out there and you're so sweet to comment and I'm just looking forward to showing you these uh, fun things from the past and let's get going on our new stuff for this coming season. You know, you could still have snow on the ground, but spring is coming. And so let's get in the mood for spring. Hey everybody, I'm Susie and this is Susie's Stuff. Welcome to Station KDIY Channel 146. I'm so happy you're here. I would love it if you'd click and subscribe and then click the bell to be notified when I upload a new episode. And if you like what you see, give me a thumbs up or even a comment. So don't touch that dial. Let's go make some stuff. On my list is a floral watering can. This is such a fun project and I love those watering cans they have out now at Dollar Tree. They come in all different colors and I chose the gray one. I'm using some wax antique paint to sort of distress it and kind of dirty it up a little bit, make it old and rustic looking. And so it's plastic, so it wipes off super easy. So I'm putting on kind of a thick thick coat there and I'm just gonna kind of put it all over. And then I'm using a dry sponge to kind of rub it off and it worked out really well. I kind of like how it turned out. And now I'm using some of the Dollar Tree chalkboard paint, which is black. And so I'm going to kind of run it around the edges and a few other spots and I'll rub it off as well. It turned out so good. I love it. And don't be worried about getting it just right or just so. Remember this is plastic and if you don't like something just take a wet towel and it wipes off super easy. Just kind of like I'm doing now except I'm using a dry towel because I want to leave some of it there. And I also use my finger to kind of, you know, spread it out a little bit and uh, get it just right where I want it. But I love this technique and just practice and see how well you can do. It comes out better than you think. Next, I'm using some of the floral foam from Dollar Tree and I'm using my little scraper to cut it in half. And I'm leaving the paper on because that kind of foam kind of goes everywhere so it kind of keeps it intact. I also grabbed some pebbles that I've had from Dollar Tree. I always have those on hand. And I'm just kind of putting in there to give it a little bit of weight because the, um, the, the can itself is, is very light. So these are some beautiful floral picks that I got at Dollar Tree. I'm loving them. They kind of cascade uh, down and I'm kind of making them go out the back part. And I just love them. I wish I'd have gotten some more of these. I really am going to pick some up next time I, I go. And um, the front part is a little spare, so I'm going to add some greenery that I've had around the house. And I'm going to just kind of fill that little bare spot in. And that's it. It just came out really pretty. You can add any kind of colors. I love the yellow and gray together. These little pots are perfect to use with a real plant to give as a gift. So pick these up. I think they're they're really great. Now I'm using one of the little uh, chalkboard labels from Dollar Tree in the Crafters Square. And I'm just using a white paint pen. I've got spring going on. You can write anything you like. And then we're just going to tie it and hang it off the can. So I had some of the little scrap ticking fabric from making the wreath and it just went perfect. I hot glued it right on the top of my label and I just hung it across a little piece there and it just is darling. I love, love this and it looks so cute with my little bunny hanging out. 
So this little piece right here screams springtime and it would look great on the patio. And like I said, a real plant would be really pretty in it to give as a gift. So have fun making this craft today. Okay, board number two is called Spring flower sign and so I'm going to actually use the same technique as I did with the previous DIY but I'm going to be using some white just some white apple barrel acrylic paint and we're going to once again just kind of focus towards the center and make it all white and I got this beautiful metal flower from Dollar Tree I'm sure you've seen them they're out all around and I picked up one and I was going to actually use the welcome sign, but I decided not to. And what we're going to do is just paint this with three different colors. I'm going to start out by, I kind of bend the middle ones out just so I can get underneath them. But we're going to use three different colors. I'm going to be using some white and some pink. And then we're going to use some antique wax. So I just did one coat of the white. And now I'm using this Apple Barrel Pink Polish and I'm just going to kind of wash it over the top. The white wasn't quite dry yet, which was perfect because I got the perfect kind of pink that I wanted. But now that that's dry, although there's some places that aren't dry, but I'm using this uh, Waverly Wax Antique Paint and we're just going to sort of antique it, make it a little rusty, rustic and old. I love that little sponge brush. It works perfectly when you're doing something like this. And so it's just kind of like wherever you feel like you want to put the wax uh, antique paint and just play around with it. Nothing's perfect and it'll come out great just for you. Okay, so now this next part is a little tricky but not hard. I want to write out the word spring using some jute twine. And I got this idea from my friend, and I know that I've mentioned him before. His name is Dave from Dave's Recent Things. He's so awesome, and he made something like this during Valentine's, and he wrote out the word love. So I thought, hey, I'm going to use this and make the word spring come out. So I kind of, and I don't think you can really see it there, but I penciled out the word spring with my with my pencil so I kind of know where I'm going and it worked out really well I'm just using my hot glue hot glue gun just going slow and uh, doing a little bit at a time and here's where my tweezers come in handy again I'm just kind of tapping it together and it just worked out great I was really a little nervous but it just it came out great I loved it So now that's complete. I really, really like how it turned out. And the last simple thing is to hot glue our beautiful pink flower onto our sign. And we are done. Oh my goodness, I love rustic wood. There are endless ideas of what you can do with them. So what do you think of this one? I think it would be beautiful on the shelf. You could even add a hanger on top and hang it on your back patio but I just think it's beautiful. You can make your flower any color that you like. So grab some, grab some jute twine and a metal flower from Dollar Tree and create your sign today. All right, for my next project, it's called Free Weeds. And I'm using a Easter sign from Dollar Tree, the little garden tool, and some of the fabric that I found also at Dollar Tree in the Crafter Square. So I was so excited to find the buffalo check. And here's my inspiration. This was a gift from my mom a few years back and she got it at Hobby Lobby. So I'm gonna dupe something that I already have and give it away as a gift. I think it's so cute for uh, anybody's um, moving into a new home or they just love to garden. I love this little project. So I'm just wrapping the handle with some of the buffalo check fabric and I'm just going to kind of give it that farmhouse flair. And 
And now that that's done, I'm going to prime the little board. So I'm just going to pry up this little bunny. He's so cute. I'm going to use him in a project. And I'm going to be using my little scraper also to scrape off that glitter that we all love. And it goes everywhere. Um, I do get it off pretty well. And then I do take it outside and use my little uh, sandpaper brush or sandpaper sponge to get it all smooth. And I'm using the Waverly Chalk Paint in Ivory and I'll give it two coats. Next, I'm measuring a half an inch around the whole thing because I'm going to draw a little sort of frame to it. I think that will make everything kind of pop out real nicely. So I'm using my Sharpie paint pen and I'm just going along and making my little frame. Such a fun little project. I'm having a ball making it. So now I'm using these little stickers that I love. I love this font. These stickers are from Dollar General. So when you pop into Dollar General, there's my head, there's my head. I think I need a little highlight job. <laughs> so I am just using these little stickers from Dollar General. I ran out of the E and I just make one up. So I think it uh, is pretty, pretty good, right? I can't tell the difference. And so there is my first part, free weeds. And then I hot glued the little, what do you call that, a spade, I think. And so I'm using some little baby stickers to put on there. And I was so excited, it had a little asterisk. So I was like, oh cool, just like the one I'm, I'm duping. And so these little mini stickers are from Dollar Tree. I'm using my trusty little um, tweezers to put them on. And so now I have to pick my own. And so I'm gonna add one last little touch, some twine to go around each end. And I just love how this turned out. So inexpensive and what a darling gift. You can also add a hanger if somebody wants to hang it outside. I actually have mine hanging on my porch, on my back patio. And this one is gonna be a gift. I wonder who's gonna get it. So I hope you enjoyed this wonderful free weed sign. So cute! Project today is called the Farmhouse Butterfly Clip. And so I'm using all of these um, supplies here. And my last of my ticking fabric, I'm just cutting two pieces in sort of a very long oval shape. I didn't trace it or anything. I just kind of randomly cut it and I'm kind of tapping into my third and fourth grade classes years and years ago when we used to make tissue paper butterflies on a clothespin. <laughs> and so now I'm using some burlap because this will be the bottom of the butterfly and with the same sort of pattern. And I just, the only thing there is I just wanted to make it a little bit smaller than the top part so it'll all come together. And so now uh, you can see I already created one at the top there. So I'm just gathering the fabric with some jute twine and we're going to tie that in a knot and I'll do the same with the burlap piece. was so fun and so easy to put together. You could use any type of fabric that you have. Some floral fabric would be great for spring, but these are some, uh, some fabric pieces that I had laying around. And so now both of those are done and I'm going to be hot gluing those onto the clip. And I just used a lot of hot glue, kind of getting them all fixed up. No rhyme or reason. And we're just gonna put those right on top. Now don't worry about the bottom part not being under the top part. I'll fix that when we get it all glued together. So I'm just going to push that right on and I leave a little bitty gap at the top because I'm going to be placing the little antenna with some wire underneath there. And just making sure that's glued on there nice and secure. Holding it on, it'll glue here in just a minute. And now I'm just gonna add these wooden beads on top. Now these beads are called doll heads. 
that um, I found at Walmart and they just have one hole on the bottom and I love using these for something like this because I don't didn't want to see the holes and so now I'm taking some just some little low gauge wire and kind of curling it around the pencil to make some curly cues for the antenna and I'm gonna hot glue that like I said on the top part and then I'll add my final bead on top of that so then it's all secure So now the glue is all dried, and so now I can work with it a little bit better. I'm going to take the burlap piece and sort of push it underneath the top part, and then uh, kind of just fix it up a little bit, and there you have it. A darling farmhouse butterfly. You can clip this on anything around the house, um, an old branch that you might have sticking out of a pot, and um, they are just flying around because they are so happy. It is spring. So I ran outside and found this old sunflower branch that was out there after the snow and they clipped on perfectly and you can just add them anywhere in your house. They are darling, give you a whimsical look and I am thrilled how they turned out. And now it's time for the fun part of this episode, the DIYs. And this first one is called Cat Scratch Tray. And I'm gonna be using all of those supplies there and this Cat Scratch board. It is cracking me up that I can't believe I'm making a DIY with a Cat Scratch board, but it is gonna turn out so cute. And I'm using these paint sticks from Walmart that I've already cut down to go around the Cat Scratch board. So now I'm gonna be painting them. I love using this wax paper. It is super great for cleanup and I got it at Dollar Tree. So we are going to paint the cat scratch board with some white chalk paint from Waverly that I also purchased at Walmart. And then I'm gonna use some antique wax for the uh, um, paint sticks. So I'm just gonna paint the top of it. It goes on really easily. I'm not gonna paint the sides of the board I'm because I'm gonna use the paint sticks around it and so it dries super quick. The wax antique paint is just gonna go on very nicely. I'm just gonna do one little coat, making sure to get the sides. And then when it's all dry, I'm gonna use my sandpapering block to sort of distress it just a little bit. I also painted the six little wooden beads that you see over there to the left because they, those are gonna be hot glued on for the little handles. So now I'm just hot gluing the pieces onto the cat scratch board and this is going to be the tray. You could also add some beads on the bottom to sort of raise it up just a little bit but I just went with this um, this one this time and I'm going to be hot gluing the little beads on the end. How cute is that? And the tray is done. So all you have to do now is add the darling little mini pictures and I'm gonna put some floral in it and that is done. How cute is this? I just, I'm so in love with this piece. These little flowers, um, I don't remember the name of these, but I got two bunches of them. What is that? Uh, yeah, some weird name, I don't know, but they sure are pretty. And so I'm going to be putting two little flowers in each one of the pictures and it's done. It is so adorable. Oh, I love this piece. You have to make it. So it's really farmhouse. It's really rustic and it's really simple. I hope that you enjoy this and I hope that you can find those little pictures. I found them in that little you know, right when you walk in the store, they have that round little centerpiece. It's glass. It's got glass shelves, and they have a bunch of mini things. That's where I found those pictures. So keep your eye out for this one because I hope you can make it today. 
And my last project today is called the Relax Pillow. And I'm using two of the bath mats from Dollar Tree that you saw earlier in my mini haul and some of the jute twine that I picked up at Hobby Lobby. Now, these mats are very irregular. They don't really match. And I, because um, like one of them is a little bit bigger, but I'm using it where the two pieces are on the inside and I'm gonna turn it inside out. So I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, hot glue the edges down and I'll leave one side open to stuff it here in just a little bit. So now all three sides are hot glued together and I'm gonna pull it inside out and it really is like the best fabric. I love this for pillows. And the corners kind of came out rounded, which I didn't really plan, but it, when you turn it inside out, that's the way it happened. So it came out great. So now here comes the fun part. I'm gonna be writing the word relax with my jute twine. And it was really easy to do because the word relax doesn't really have any curvy letters in it, except for the R, which was just a little bitty curvy piece but the rest of the letters have straight pieces, so it was easy to do. Grab the little spatula uh, piece. I got that, that little tool there. I got that in the makeup section. A lot of crafters use it, and it worked perfectly with this project to hold it down while it dries. So now let's get all that together, because we want to relax. And I will tell you, this was very relaxing making this project. I love the lettering and it you cannot see any of the hot glue. I was really, really happy with that. And it looks like it was just stitched right on there. So now I'm getting the very last letter and then we're going to stuff it. Now talking about the stuffing really quick, I usually get all my stuffing from Dollar General. They have these wonderful pillows there that are kind of big and you get it for two dollars and it comes with some great stuffing so we're gonna uh, stuff that there I got it all done and I'm using these little pink clips from Dollar Tree to hold this last part together this was the only trickiest part is to make sure that it looks good um, when you have to hot glue it this way to close it up so I'm just kind of pushing that all in there and I love those little clips they do come in handy yay it's done how cute is that and look at the back I think that would be pretty um, on both sides actually so I'm really pleased how this turned out. You could even add some tassels on each of the corners. And um, take a look at my little greenery piece there that we made earlier. So now I'm thinking it's time to relax, grab a movie, and enjoy all of our projects today. And our next project is so incredibly easy and affordable, the Black Pebble Fern Vase. And it costs $3. I am using some of those beautiful, smooth black pebbles and one of the little vases. Now you can get a taller one or whatever size that you like. You may already have one. And I'm gonna be using this beautiful fern piece. I'm gonna cut them off and just place them in there. I mean, this is so easy. Oh my goodness. You could do this with your eyes closed. Aren't those pebbles so beautiful? I haven't seen a lot of them, but they just put some new ones out and I just think these are gorgeous. So I am just cutting off. I start out with three, but I do, I do use all five of them. So you're gonna place those in there first because once you put the rocks in, it's kind of hard to push them down in there. So put your fern in first. Aren't we having fern? <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, and so then you just fill it right up with the pebbles. Get it in there. 
And this little uh, jar or this little vase used exactly one package. So that there you go. Easy. Three dollars right in front of you. And it's beautiful. It looks like a, you know, like a ten, fifteen dollar piece. So I'm just kind of fiddling with it and look how cute. So now I decided it, I might as well use the other two. What am I thinking? And so I'm looking at my cutters and it has those little holes where you strip um, like wire. My dad taught me that years ago. And so it worked out great because it stripped off um, just a little bit but kept the wire. So it worked perfectly so I could stick them down in there. And um, so yeah, it worked great. So now I'm putting in um, all five of them. Gotta get it just right. You gotta pull them and twist them and put them in exactly the way you want. And it came out beautiful. Again. And ta-da! There it is. So easy and so high-end looking. I think that you're gonna enjoy this. It's super easy, super cheap, and um, wow, it just is so pretty. You can keep this up all year round. So get all your supplies at Dollar Tree and make yours today. Moving right along, all these supplies are from Dollar Tree, and this one is called the Tall Wooden Fern Block. And I'm using three of the little crate thingies, the little mini ones, a uh, cube, a couple of the tower blocks and just one of the fern pieces from that um, that little floral pick and so this is so easy as well all I'm gonna do is just take some Waverly chalk paint in white and just kind of roughly put it on there I'm not gonna be super perfect with putting it on I kind of want to leave it uh, with some of that little wooden uh, showing through like a little whitewash and then I'm gonna do the same to the block and then I'm just gonna add a daub or two of the uh, silver lining paint it's a very very light gray and I'm just going through all of it. It's kind of hard to see it there on the camera. The block can show up pretty well, but I just wanted to use a little bit on there to give it some depth. And now I'm just hot gluing the pieces together. Now, of course, you can use some wood glue, um, but this is kind of a rough surface, so the hot glue worked really well. And um, yeah, I love this putting it together. And then, so all we're gonna do is just place the fern leaf right on top. And so I'm just adding some hot glue right on the rib of the, uh, the leaf. And I wanted to make sure it's in the center so I kind of had to pull it over a little bit. But it just becomes instant decor. You can color the background any paint color that you like. I just thought the white would really make the green pop. And I just, I love this. It is so easy. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five dollars. And this looks extremely high end and you could totally, you know, resell this for a good $10, $15. Now, what I'm doing here is adding a couple of the tower blocks on there just to give it some stability and it will be done in no time. So hot glue that right on and we're just about done. La, 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 la. Oh, I'm just having so much summer fern. <laughs> and look how it turned out. Isn't it beautiful? I think it's going to be gorgeous on your shelf, anywhere you like, the bathroom. And it just came together so simple and very affordable. So I hope that you can find all these pieces. Surely you can find the wooden pieces. I always see those. 
and I hope that you're able to create yours today. This project is called the White Fern Block Frame. And in this video, you're probably gonna laugh because there is a little mess up, but the mess up turns into a thing of beauty. So you'll see here coming up, I'm using those uh, fern little pieces right there. And then I'm using this little roller uh, paint kit from Dollar Tree. And then I have this frame. Now, when I got this frame, I didn't notice it, but it was cracked on the end and I was so upset because that's the only one I had and I really wanted to use it. So we're just gonna pretend that it's not there because um, I just love it so much. <laughs> so anyway, we're gonna use it. And um, so it comes with this little, um, little matting piece. And so I have to put on the little pieces that came off of it, you'll see. I was gonna originally put some brown wrapping paper for the background, but when I turned it over, it already had sort of that color. So I'm just using the brown kind of paper that came with the frame. So these little styrofoam pieces kind of popped off, so I'm just hot gluing those back on. Uh, this is the little matte piece and then we're going to get to painting. So I put that back together and that's gonna be the frame itself. So you see here, I was gonna use the brown paper, but the paper from the frame was brown, so there was no need to do that. So what my original <laughs> intention was to do was I was going to paint the fern piece and then I wanted to stamp it on the brown paper. But as you see, it's not gonna work out that great, but something else happens. Look at this little um, tray, it's so funny. Not very sturdy, but it really works great. I wanna try this with some other things. So I'm taking the little roller and I'm taking my little fern piece and placing it down. And I'm going to roll over it with the white paint. me just a few minutes to get situated but I finally got it all ready and and uh, here we go so I'm rolling it with the white paint not too much because I didn't want it to blotch but we're getting ready and we're rolling it rolling it looks great okay putting a little more here and there and then I'm getting ready to stamp it on the, the paper and yay no it did not work but i'm like why do i need to stamp it when look how gorgeous the white um painted fern looks already why do i need to stamp it so i was like look how beautiful that is we're going with that and it even is more 3d than a stamp so I did all three of them. I'm just laughing because it was just so funny to me. And so we're gonna place that all together. So first I'm putting everything, laying it down and I'm kind of arranging it how I want it to be. And then it's just gonna to come together beautifully. I know you're gonna love it. you don't really use the glass when you're creating something it's just fine without the glass but the glass is really the secret because it pushes it down and gives it really that that perfect look so the glass is important on this project and so now I'm getting it all put down and flipping it over and putting it together And getting it ready for the big reveal. One, two, three. 
Wow, look at that. Isn't it gorgeous? Oh my goodness, I love it. Love it. Now one thing about this frame, it did not have the little stand in the back, which again worked out perfectly because I used two of my little cubes and I'm just going to place it right on top hot glue that on and I do use a few of the tower block pieces to secure it in the back it does stay on just like this but I didn't want it to topple over and so we use the little tower block pieces so we've got the pieces going on and as soon as I hot glue them on, I'm going to paint them black so they blend in and look like a very high quality piece. We're not noticing that chipped corner. No, we're not. And these are done. And let's get ready for the beautiful display. Here it is. What do you think? I am in love with this piece. How beautiful. And I love that it looks like a perfect stamp, don't you think? So create yours. You could put any, you could put some flowers in it, some press some flowers I think would be beautiful. But just always have fun with your projects. And for my very last project today, it's called Sew, Water, and Wait. And I'm going to be using all of these supplies here from Dollar Tree, except there's a little bit of burlap that I got at Walmart. So I'm taking one of these awesome bamboo cutting boards from Dollar Tree these are kind of rare so when you see them pick up a few they're perfect for little signs and I'm also going to be using some more of the little daisy um, garland pieces that I showed you previously and we just you know pulled them apart and got rid of that yellow part we're just going to use the white part so now I'm going to trim down the burlap so that it fits on there just perfectly not all the way on but just like on the inside part. And then I'm gonna ravel it just a little bit using my tweezers. And while I'm doing that, I just wanted to mention that Susie's stuff uploads on Tuesdays and Saturdays. Tuesday is my 60 second DIY at 9 a.m. Central and Saturday is a full DIY episode just like this one at 9 a.m. as well. So tune in. So now I'm just going to be giving this a little bit of a sandpaper, give it a little more rustic look, distressed look, and I'm going to hot glue the burlap right in the center. And remember in my last video or the video before that, um, I got this little spatula thingy over in the crafter square and it worked perfectly to take off little signs like that. That's kind of what I was envisioning it to do. So grab a spatula if you see it, works great. So I just took off that little galvanized piece and hot glued it right on. And then we're gonna put the daisies on. I'm also gonna be using some wooden beads for the center. Now again, if you don't have or can't find this little bamboo cutting board, you can use any piece of uh, wood that you have laying around or another little Dollar Tree sign, whatever you have. But I hope you like this cute little sign. I just love it. So now I'm gonna be using one of the little um, easels, the little mini easels at Dollar Tree. It kind of has a dry erase board on it, but I've been using this a few times to uh, add and make a stand. And this works perfectly because I'm just adding a bunch of hot glue and we're going to hot glue it right to our sign, right in the center, get it straight. And it's gonna stand up just beautifully. How cute is this sign? I love it. Look how it turned out. And you can add a bow somewhere if you like. This would be great outside on your porch or on a shelf. I love it. It's so easy, so budget friendly. And I hope that you're able to find all these supplies to make yours today.
So I hope you enjoyed my very first compilation video. I've never done that before, but I'm so glad I did because you might have missed some of my favorites and it was so fun to put them all together and get us in the mood for some new spring uh, DIYs coming up next Saturday. So once again, I do a Tuesday 60 second DIY and a Saturday full DIY episode. So thanks for joining me on Susie Stuff, KDIY Channel 146. Bye everybody.